For this video, I wanted to switch it up. See, experimenting and creating your own style of CGI is essential, especially if you want to pursue visualization as a career. However, I often find that I learn a lot more about method and technique when I try to replicate other people's styles. So in this video, I'm going to have a crack at replicating one of my favorite creator scenes. Let's have a look at Kaisel Salim's or the Kaiser's signature automotive studio shop. If you're looking to give your industrial design portfolio renders a boost, then you should definitely check out the Keyshot Studio assets by Moment. As of writing, my team and I have now published 20 different ready to render scenes across four diverse collections, rock, colorful, white space, and luxury, with lots more in the works. Stick with our pre-configured settings or use the scenes as a starting block for your own creations. It's time to do your designs justice and stand out from the crowd. If you're interested, I'll leave the link to moment.co.uk down in the description. So when I talk about the Kaiser's signature automotive studio shot, this is what I'm referring to. And you'll see loads of examples of these shots on his Instagram page. He uses this style quite a lot and I absolutely love it. So whenever this comes across my timeline on my feed, I know this is him before I've even looked at the name. So key characteristics of these shots that I can pick out. First of all, you've got these very bright highlights, which are made either with a spotlight or a very small HDRI pin. I'm going to use a HDRI pin for speed and ease of movement. Uh, but if I was doing final renders, if, especially if it was client work, I'd probably be using a spotlight um, to get just that better result. The second thing I can pick out is this beautiful infinite backdrop. Now, I would say it's either a backdrop ramp or a backdrop round. Kaiser's not using Keyshot anymore, but that's the kind of thing I'd be looking to use in here. But it just gives this beautiful background. And then on top of that, you've got the reflective ground. Now, sometimes these are cleaner reflections. Sometimes they're a lot more scuffed up, almost like a, a concrete or ice. Now, I'm going to show you how to do both in this video. Um, but you choose once you've seen both, you can decide what's better for your own visuals. So first thing to know with mine is I haven't got some body kit modded car, Mazda or whatever, uh, and I'm not going to go out and buy a model, not for this video, but I do have a rather nice model of a Kia EV6. I'll put it in this burnt copper color and all the materials pretty much other than that standard. So glass, plastic, metal. Uh, when you've got a detailed model of a car, you don't need to go overboard with the materials because you've got the detail there. So the first thing we'll look at is the camera. Now, one thing I definitely noted with the camera is they're always quite low down. So I'm going to go for a, for a lower angle um, of the Kia. And then the perspective. Now, I don't have the figures, um, but I went with, when I was recreating this, a 60 mil lens, which I think in reality, you've got to stand quite far away to get a whole car in at 60. But in CGI, if that's the perspective, uh, that's what I was drawn to. Uh, you decide what works best. Um, for yours. I'm going to go 60 mil here and we'll save and lock that camera. So next up, we can look at the backdrop. So the backdrop in Keyshot, at least, I'm going to use a backdrop round and that is in the model library under models and backdrops, backdrop round. So to add that in, right click, add to scene and then go to your scene tree. It will already put the move tool on. First thing to do is click snap to ground to make sure it's actually on the ground, which is not when you add it in and then click O on the keyboard for the for the geometry view. So I'm going to click the triple headed arrow to move this around in the geometry view. I'm going to hold shift as I rotate it around and then I'm going to put it underneath the car. I am also going to rain back the scale a little bit because why not? And then again, just reposition it so the car is comfortably on that ramp. Only real thing that's important there is that this covers your whole frame. You don't want this slicing off. You want this to cover your whole frame. So if you are further away from the car, then you might want to have a bigger backdrop round to get that full coverage. Now, material wise for the backdrop round, I'm going to change the material type to a paint. And then the color, I'm going to choose a much lighter blue than the default. And I'm going to tweak it slightly towards sky blue. It's in and around that. Um, you'll often see a lot of your studio shots with this bluey tint. Of course, you put your own stamp on it once you've learned the tools. Uh, but I think it works really well to, to help the other colors pop. Now, we're going to come back to do the reflections later. So I think it will be easy to see the issue once we've got the lighting in place. So let's move on to the lighting next. So I'm going to go over to the environment tab. 
Make sure you're in the HDRI editor. We're gonna change the default startup. First up, I'll change it to the background to be a solid color, not an image, and then change that to black, giving us a blank canvas. Then I'm gonna add in our first pin. Now I've got a video that I'm gonna do in the future on this method, but I've got into the habit of doing this and I, I really like the results. So change the pin to rectangular, uh, change the, add some rounded corners on there just a bit. You just gotta think if you had an area light in real life, does that have perfectly sharp corners? Probably not. And then fall off mode, instead of going from edge, change it to circular and then increase the fall off. Now what that does is keep your sort of hot spot where the bulb would be or bulbs right in the middle, then it tails off to the corners. It's a bit much on the rounded. Uh, maybe not that important, depending, especially if you've got matte products, but when you've got something as reflective as a car, it's gonna make quite a big difference. Now I'm gonna position this first pin on uh, low down on the right hand side, picking up the contours of the side of the car. Now I'm not necessarily mimicking the Kaiser style here, I'm just going for what I would think is good for this model of the car. Um, your mileage may vary, your models definitely will vary, so you decide what's best. Now I'm gonna duplicate this pin, now we've done the settings for it, and don't delete it, duplicate it. And the next one I'm gonna bring up to the bonnet. Now the bonnet and windscreen, I want to kind of slice open. So what I'm gonna do is move it round and I'm gonna try lifting it up higher. There we go. Just try to slice over the top of the windscreen so you can see that it's that sharp reflective surface. Now a note on sharp reflections, when you're using bog standard HDRIs like this, you get to define the resolution of the HDRI in Keyshot. And you can do that by going to the background layer and using the resolution dropdown. Now, when you've got a very glossy model, such as a car with metallic paint and glass on it, you wanna increase that. So if I increase it up to 8,000 by 4,000, look at this soft edge here. As soon as I click this button to reboot the HDRI, that gets a lot sharper. So it's essential that you use that when you've got glossy products like this. Now the last light that I wanna add in here is that bright HDRI pin that I talked about at the start. So to do that, I'm gonna add in another blank pin. For this one, I'm just gonna turn the fall off down to zero. I'm gonna change the radius to two and the brightness, because it's such a small pin, we're probably gonna to have to go up to 100, 200 to really get the, the use out of this pin. Okay, so set highlight features active. I'm gonna just gonna see where I can position this pin to get a load of pickups on the car. And see if I position it up here, you actually get to see the pin in about three different reflections. And it's up to you how you wanna do yours and where it works best for your model. But what we're basically saying here is that there is a spotlight doing most of the work for the lighting here, pointing down onto this car. And when we change the image style and the reflections, you should be able to see the bright reflections uh, from, sorry, the bright shadows the sharp shadows, there we go, from this pin underneath the car. I'm gonna go with something like that, see if I can get that little pickup here. Okay, image style next. Lighting styled in, before we do that, I might just change this. So I'm just gonna raise this side up to 1.5 and this one I'm gonna bring up to three. So this one at the front does the heavy lifting of the lighting at least for the Kia. That's a beautiful reflection at the start, the front. Image styles, photographic mode and decide on your contrast first, really. I would say this is a bit much in contrast, so I'm gonna go down, and then I'm gonna increase the exposure quite a bit, something like that. Looks pretty good on my monitor. See how it fares on YouTube? Maybe a little bit less. Then we'll look at the bloom. Now, bloom is something that other programs do really well. They have bloom, flare, think about Cinema 4D, if you've played around with it. Beautiful light settings. Keyshot's got bloom, and I think it works fairly well. It's something that I've actually been putting into a lot more of my visualization recently. So my method for bloom, enable it in the image tab, set the intensity to one, set the radius to 100, so everything is bloomed and you can clearly see it. And then increase the threshold until you're only left with what you want to bloom. Now, in this case, you can see it's blooming here. Now, do I want it to bloom the lights at the front? I'm gonna go with no. I think it's a little bit too much. I'm just gonna leave it to bloom these sharp pins here. Once you've got your threshold dialed in, then you can change your intensity. You can even change your radius to get them back to a reasonable point. So me taking the intensity back to brown 
0.6. I'm not going to decrease the radius. I quite like that. Makes that look bright. You can tell it looks bright because it's blooming the lens. That's the lighting done. That's the image style done. The last thing that we really need to do is focus on the backdrop ramp. And like I said, I wanted to leave it till last so you can see the issue. So we've got a beautiful reflection of the car on the ground, but then we have this horrible reflection of the pins on the backdrop ramp. So I'm gonna show you how you can remove that. And the way we're gonna remove that is by controlling the refractive index of the backdrop ramp, the round, sorry, with a texture, with a gradient texture. Let me show you how you can do it. So double click on the backdrop round, go to the material graph and add in a gradient. So right click textures, color gradient. Now for our color gradient, we're gonna double click, center on part, and then we're gonna change the gradient type to spherical. Now we're gonna click move texture. And at this point, we're probably gonna to need to zoom out. So I'm gonna go back to my free camera and zoom out. Okay, now we wanna position this gradient right on top of our car. In fact, in the car, underneath the car, like so. If you're having trouble positioning it or seeing the impact, what you can also do is click C on the keyboard for the color gradient. And then you'll also see that we need to massively, or in my case, need to reduce the size. So I'm gonna bring down the scale so you can see that gradient come into effect. There you go. Okay. So that's about right. So where that gradient is impacted, that's where the car is gonna reflect. Everything else won't have those sharp reflections on it because we're gonna change the refractive index for them. So what you can do first is plug this into the refractive index of this paint to see how that fares. I'm just gonna go back to my main camera for now and we don't need this much space. Let's see our car a little bit more. So refractive index, take the output of the color gradient to the plus symbol and then dial it into refractive index. Now, the reason this goes so crazy is because we are just using colors for refractive index at the moment. We're not using number values. So we need to right click our blue line, go to utilities and add in a color to number. Okay, so we're now controlling the refractive index with a color to number. Now, basically what we need to do is have the ramp or the round, sorry, everything on the walls as a refractive index of one. At one, it's not gonna have any of those sharp reflections. And then we want the base of the car to be above one, maybe 1 1.5 or two, depending on the effect you're going for. So again, if I go back to my color to number and hit C on the keyboard, you'll see what we've got here. So this white is one, okay, at the moment. White is higher value, that's one. So remember, we want that to be 1.5 or two. I'm gonna go up to two. And then we want our output from value, which is everything that's black here, not to be zero, that's why it looks so crazy. We want that to be one, okay? Now you can't see much of a difference on here. Doesn't matter, just trust the output. When I hit C on the keyboard now and come back to my regular view without the preview, now you can see that we've lost those sharp reflections on the wall. Now, one thing you can do is change how big that gradient is. Oh, I actually got this beautiful light streak going on around the back of the car, which I'm going to opt to keep in this example. Uh, but you can choose how big that gradient is, how far it expands up the walls to the curve and how far around the car. I'm going to leave mine uh, just like so. So now the last thing really to look at is the reflections on the ground. Now, bog standard thing you can do is just go into the backdrop round material and increase the roughness. Typically, if you look at the Kaiser's scenes when he's using like a clean roughness, they're probably about values of 0 0.02, just a little bit scuffed up like so. And I think that gives a really nice effect. It's not too distracting from the car itself, which I think a full reflective, full glossy surface can be, but it's just enough scuffed up to really make an impact. Now, what you'll see the Kaiser do a lot as well is use a roughness map to make the ground more scuffed up and more irregular. So an easy way to do that without having to use external textures is to use something like a granite texture. So jumping back into the material graph now, I'm gonna right click, go to textures and find the granite node. And then plug the granite into the plus symbol and then go to roughness. Okay, now just like the color gradient, or the refractive index should we say, roughness is a number value, not a color value. So when you're plugging into roughness, you really should right click, go
go to utilities and add in a color to number as well. Then you can click C on the keyboard to preview what the granite texture is doing. So the granite texture in black and white looks like this. It's almost like noise. It's quite patchy. It's going to work well for emulating some sort of rough concrete, plaster, even puddles maybe. So in the granite texture, I'm going to change it to white. Might as well get high contrast. And then I'm going to increase the size of it, probably up to around, I don't know, 1700, maybe a little bit less millimeters. The larger it is, the larger your patches are going to be essentially. Okay, I'm going to stay in the preview of the color to number. Now I'm going to increase the contrast. I'm going to do that by bringing up the input from and bringing down the input to. That will push the gray values to black and up to white. Now anything that's lighter is going to be more rough. Lighter, higher values, more rough. So in this, I've probably got more rough patches than I do shiny patches. It's really up to you how you want to play around with this. I'm going to invert it. To invert it in the color to number, you change the output from to one, the output two to zero. In fact, that's actually worse off. I'm going to keep it as it is. But there you go. That's how you invert it. But then I'm going to make it so that our output two, so our highest roughness value, if I come out of the preview now, you'll see that most of it is very, very rough. I'm going to bring that down to around 0.05. And then my shiniest is going to be not zero, but probably about 0 0.02, something like that. Maybe 0 0.01. Could actually have your roughest parts even higher if you wanted to. So now you can see if I start to zoom in, what you actually get is these patches almost of polished or wet um, areas. And you've got two values, your output to and your output from to play around with. I've just realized my car is floating, so I'm gonna drop that down a little bit. It's always good to cut into your tires a little bit with a car, because in real life, they don't just hold their shape, they squash a little bit, so I'm gonna go with that. So that's a couple of different things you can use for your ground, and that's it for the shot. So a recap of what we've done there, we've added, we've done our camera, 60 mil perspective, quite low down. We've added in our backdrop round, which is a paint material. We've controlled the refractive index of that paint material and the roughness to achieve this effect here, where you haven't got the reflective sides, just got that reflective floor. And then we've done the lighting with two really beautiful area lights and one very bright spotlight or very small pin, all tied together with a really nice low contrast image style. And I think we get really close to creating uh, the Kaiser's signature shop. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section down below. Definitely know if you let me know if you want me to try and recreate anyone else's style. I'll see if I can give that a go in Keyshot. If you enjoyed the video, give this a like. If you want to watch more of my content in the future, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Other than that, I really hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you in the next one.